Hello. Good evening. How are you? I am phenomenal. How are you? What? Can't complain. <laughs> phenomenal is maybe something to strive for for me at this point, but that's a wonderful word. So. Uh, it's my birthday month, so I'm oh. celebrating all month. Yes, that makes sense. There's Hi, everyone. And I see Hello, you. how are you? I am doing well. How are you? Fabulous. <laughs> <clears throat> um, if i if i can ask before we go live this is a two-hour meeting right the agenda says 6 30 to 8 30 has that been the schedule that is just the time that is set up for it okay so it doesn't end until it ends okay um today so i have a hard stop at 8 30 because i have my little one by myself again okay yeah. all right and I am available until 8 p.m. Um, so so um, well, I wanted to say, so if we go over, um, can um, can you pass it to Allegra? Are you willing to take it? Yep, as like the co-host okay. or whatever. Yeah, sure. to be a co-host, because obviously when you can't, then I will. Okay, that's not a problem. Um, I'm trying to remember where it was on here. to add you in now. I see Miss Young has her hand raised. Yes. So I, I just want to remind everybody that um, you are recording now um, and you're live now. So the to make, um, to ease the process of scheduling the meetings, they were set up um, pretty far in advance um, as in a recurring event. And so uh, uh, the meetings are automatically recorded once you start to enter the space. Ah. That's, that sounds fancy and above my pay grade, but that's <laughs> also probably good for us to, you know, Wait, so that so, it happens. So, um, wait, but, Pam, so can you, can you um, repeat that? Because it didn't, that didn't used to be the case. So what, what is going on now? So um, to make the process of scheduling the meetings easier, they are set up as a recurring Zoom invite. So you, and um, I don't know what it looks like on, from the recipient side, but from the scheduler side, we can schedule many months out because these events happen on the same you know, third Wednesday of the, or second Wednesday of the month at the same time. So it eases the process of, of scheduling and posting the meetings. And um, so that's what has happened. And there are um, other boards like with the um, Human Rights Commission and with the Disability Access Advisory uh, Commission, I they're set up to automatically record so that there's no missed uh, meeting, uh, you know, you, someone doesn't forget to hit the record button and then, you know, you don't have any, you don't have the meeting. So they, the moment you enter, uh, um, and it, it should appear on your, as you enter a notice that says this meeting is being recorded. Yeah, no, it does. It's just that before when it, when, when that message came up, it didn't automatically mean that the recording would begin because I remember always Jennifer saying, Hey everyone, now, the, now I'm going to begin recording. So this is a difference. This is a change. So, so well, I, I think if the, if the notice came up, it was recording, but I think she, um, um, did not automatically record all of her meetings. Okay. But and, and neither here nor there. I just wanted to make sure I understood what was what was going on. Okay, and also just to let you know, Allegra, I'm pretty sure that um, you should be you are a, a host. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and read the thing. Uh, it is six thirty-five. This is a meeting of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee on September eleventh, two thousand twenty-four. Pursuant to the Chapter 20 Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom by, or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, Lisette, can you hear us? 
Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, and Deborah and Everald have already spoken and I have heard them and have they heard everybody else? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go over the agenda very quickly. So we will have announcements and agenda review, um, member reports, public comment. Um, Deborah and I had talked about moving item number seven, which is the standing items of Cress and DEI, Rob, and Youth Empowerment updates up prior to the annual goal discussion and speaker series and membership discussion, because um, that was the part that Everald was going to help us with. Um, and then upcoming agenda items and meeting schedule, which I think we'll kind of touch base on with four through six. Public comments, any other topics not reasonably anticipated and adjourning. Um, so that is the agenda. Does anybody have any announcements? Um, yes. I do have some. Let me look here. This is from a community member basically saying that there's um, some educational opportunities. Um, and so one of them is the Bridge Amherst Family Resource Center, which is a family resource center on 101 University Drive. Um, and there's some like calendar group, uh, some groups and events that are happening also with pr Project AMP, and there's a website for them. And then in September, there's uh, September 21st, there's a wellness weekend yoga uh, with them too. So what I'll do is, well, I guess how can, how, how can we kind of put more information about this so people know about it? Is there a way to kind of do that? So it's basically, so Family Bridge has homework help and the project AMP, which is a family program out of Springfield has wellness opportunities. This is what this community member wanted us to, to share with, with, with the public. Pamela, did you have a response to how to share that information? Yes, the, it can be uh, posted publicly on the town website on the community calendar. And um, I believe anyone has can have access to that. Just go to the town of Amherst. Uh, main web web page. If you scroll down, there'll be a calendar for uh, um, for open meetings or for board meetings. And then there's a, a adjacent to that is a calendar for community events. And there's a mechanism to type in and submit an event into that community calendar. Okay, thank you. That that's it for me. Any announcements? I do. Um, <clears throat> there's there's another affordable housing project that has started with the ZBA. Um, we had our first meeting last Thursday. This is with Wayfinders, and um, this is not home ownership. Um, this one is um, geared towards um, rental, and. <clears throat> This property is um, going to be at, I'm trying to get the address correctly, um, Southeast Street and um, Route 9, and part of it is the old school building. Um, so it's, it's before the committee um, for approval. Um, yes, it will actually be some time before it's actually constructed, but there's information available um, on the website that would give people more information about the project. Um, it actually, the units look, the building design all looks very good. And so I'm hoping that um, we can spread the word that there's more affordable housing being built in Amherst. And again, um, this one is going to be um, based on income as well. Mm -hmm. did receive an email from Valley Community Development today um, and on uh, Wednesday, October 2nd at 6.30, there will be a um, 
webinar type thing about the Amherst community homes. Um, so they'll be talking about the timeline, the qualification guidelines, and um, the information about the housing development that will be going in for the home ownership in North Amherst. So that's through the community, Valley Community Development. Um, and again, that's Wednesday, October 2nd. Um, Have any announcements? Uh, yeah. On then to member reports. Um, yeah, I just want to report that uh, we do have two um, applicants or candidates for um, the CSSJC. Um, and so we'll be meeting with them and we'll see how everything shakes out, which is you know very good news since we need more members. Um, but want to put it out to the community to still you know make sure to let people know that um, we are still recruiting. Uh, so if anyone is interested um, for them to apply and that we still have one um, position available for a young person um, that we have slotted for a young person to be part of CSSJC. So if anyone is out there within the school system, um, uh, please, you know, outreach to young people so that they can apply for this um, great opportunity to serve and to um, help the town um, and especially the, those most vulnerable and marginalized in our communities. Thank you, Deborah. Uh -huh. Not seeing any other member reports, we can turn to public comment. Um, there are currently six attendees. Um, so if you want to make a public comment, please use the raise hand feature. Um, we will not respond directly to your comment, but we will listen and we will have another public comment period at the end if you would like to speak then instead. Did I say yeah, there are currently in. six people in the audience? Did I say that part? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Good evening. Can people hear yes. me? Yes. Um. So basically, uh, today marks the um, one year anniversary of the uh, Dr. D. Shabazz passing. And I'm wondering if the co-chair will do a moment of silence in her remembrance. I'm not sure if I, you know, if it's appropriate for me to do that. So I, I just wanted to mention that. Dr. Shabazz was the co-chair for CSSJC, and today was exactly one year that she transitioned. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, I think that that's a nice way to honor her memory, especially in a meeting that she was always such a big part of and a big part of the community solution putting forward um, that brought this group to fruition. Um, so if everyone would join me in a moment, thinking about D.
other public comment period at the end of the meeting. Um, but not um, any Allegra, other... I just, just want to chime in too and say my kind of words of um, just awe and remembrance for Dr. D. Um, I know that wherever she's at, she's given us the energy and the power to continue to fight this fight that we fight for, for those who are voiceless in this um, town. Um, and I believe she is one of the people that gives me and others energy to continue to go on day after day, given all the uh, challenges that we face when we're dealing with social justice, equity, inclusion, diversity, um, and non-marginalization. Um, and you know, all her contributions will continue, especially as we continue to fight for our recommendations, right, from CSWG, and then CSSJC for these recommendations to come into fruition. I think that will be one of the best way and the most honored way to honor her memory is to make sure that all of those recommendations that CSWG put into that, that made, that we would actually put them into effect as opposed to what's been happening, which is delay, delay, delay. So that being said, you know, Dr. D, wherever you are, continue to give us the, that, that warrior energy. We appreciate it. Hearing some updates. Um, and then get into the rest of the agenda. Updates from Crescent DEI. Okay. okay, I guess I'll go first. Um, in the packet, I included the August 2024 um, data. This month, Crest had 219 calls. The most external call was from a previous engagement with 37 calls, 43%. Other sources were town departments at 29, which is 33%. Office walk-ins at 11, 13%. And phone calls at 8, 9%. The calls were the following CAD types, community outreach, 21 which is 24%, assist, seven, assist citizen at 17, which is 20%, community engagement at 17, 20%, follow up at 15, 17%, administration, administrative, pardon, at six, 7%, assist business agency at five, 6%, and assist APD at one, 1%. The majority of our calls were on behalf of other at 53, which is 61%, themselves 23 which is 26 percent and someone else at 11 and 13 percent 22 calls or 25 percent were either follow-up or will require future follow-ups of all calls zero were transport calls six which is seven percent were mental health calls and there were no potentially unsafe calls responders had 185 recorded interactions with neighbors this month there have been 1,239 total interactions this year. Responders distributed 219 resources during interactions this month. And Crest collaborated with town departments 29 times, businesses seven times, and social service agencies 15 times. The demographics for Crest interacted most with multi-gender, 14, multiracial, 38, and multi-aged, 37. Thank you, um, Camille, for that report. Definitely appreciate it. And I think it, it makes a difference for us to get the report uh, prior to the meeting and including it in the packet. I think that's very helpful. So thank you for taking the time um, for putting it together. Um, I wanted to ask in terms of this, and then I have another question after this. Um, so with, with the breakdown, can you tell me which ones were like dispatch calls or were there any calls that were dispatched to um, Cress? Um, off of this, I cannot, I don't have that other sheet. Um, the dispatch calls, as you well know, we are working with dispatch on getting finalizing standard operating procedures that once they are set, have to go through, um, the process to make sure that we have taken care of all 
information and also to make sure that dispatch um, there's protocols. So we are working with the dispatch to get all those done. The other part of this is, is that for each of the calls, there needs to be a separate standard operating procedures. And a lot of the calls have been based at eight to 10 pages of information. And we are trying to condense that to be as short and to the point as possible so that they are easy to easily accessed and easily to digest for people, especially the new dispatchers. So, so we are so working when, closely with dispatch. So do you know then when um, these calls are going to be dispatched? Because again, I mean, that was one of the things that we've been wanting to have happen. And um, it's already two years that that Crest has been, over two years that Crest has been in existence. Um, and that was one of the main um, recommendations that we had had. So do you see any timeline um, in terms of when this will be resolved, these SOPs and working with dispatch and so on and so mm -hmm. forth so that we can get this, this ball rolling? Well, I, I understand your frustration because um, this week makes five months that I've been here. And while we have set up a lot of standard operating procedures for a uh, baseline for workforce just in our department within ourselves, to work with other department takes time. And it is very frustrating, and I understand that. The other part of this also is there is a new head of dispatch who has been eager to work with us. And along with everything else, that is what we're working on. So while I'd like to say this will happen, you know, in a certain timeline, I can't honestly. But it is in the process. Um, we have one of the 11 almost completed. And it... It, it is a whole, it is a lot more comprehensive, pre, excuse me, comprehensive than even I had um, understood in the beginning. Um, I had believed we would be able to just write these up, bang them out and they'd be done. But there's a lot of nuanced language that needs to go in there and a lot of clarity when it comes to legalities that I didn't know about. Um. Yeah, so for me, and I think, you know, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let Everett kind of dig in more into the numbers or what have you, because for me with some of this and my focus, right, still is to make sure that that Crest is an alternative to policing um, and, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 simply a, a social service agency, because that was never done to, of Crest. So from some of these numbers, I'm not really sure, you know, you know, if that is indeed happening. And, and because dispatch is not dispatching, because obviously if, if dispatch is dispatching, that means calls are coming in that are supposed to go to, to, to policing and they're being dispatched, right, to Crest as an alternative to policing. So since those things are not in place, um, then I, I'm not sure, right? I'm not sure whether Crest, if some of these numbers really mean that, you know, Crest responders are back in the lunch halls monitoring lunch, you know, which again was not my intent. No. Got suppressed when I was at, on CSWG, that was never done intent, right? Uh, it's an alternative to policing. So for me, I guess I want to have more, this report is good, but I want to have more of the kind of like understanding, right? That some of these numbers actually mean that, that they're responding to, uh, uh, you know, everything that is non-criminal um, uh, uh, and non-violent, right? Um, and one of the things yes. was that we wanted to make sure that it included noise complaints and all of those different things. So I, I guess I want a little bit more kind of specificity in terms of what are they actually responding to so that it it, it, it it falls into those buckets. Or it doesn't have to be specifics, but at least that is falling into those buckets so that I know that, okay, are they responding to noise complaints? What are some of the no. issues that no. they're actually responding to? Um, yeah, because for me, that that's what that's that's so, where I see press going. Right. So one of the things that is very clear is that noise complaints come under mass general law. OK, so those are the things that um, because we are in a uh, the town gown and because of all the colleges, when the police respond to noise complaints, it is where. It could be a party with five people or it could be a party with 100 people. So they always dispatch two cruisers or two officers to noise complaints. So that is one of the things that has been tried to work out. And as far as when it comes to 
what is being dispatched because we cannot see dispatch because of HIPAA and Corey, while the dispatch calls that are able to be seen, you can see like a call type, but it may start out as one thing and be something actually different. So the nuance part of the calls is the part that we need to be able to get access to, to be able to sit down with dispatch and figure out exactly what calls we can go to. So as it is now, if a call comes in and an officer or dispatch realize it's a crest call, they will call us. Excuse me, down. Um, but until we get everything, you know, ironed out, and that was one of the problems is that while things were set up, there were, everything wasn't clarified. And that's one of the issues is that it's not um, clear you know, what calls that we can go to. There are some that are easy and we can go to, but some of the other ones like mental health, there are people that are known in the, the town that have different histories and the officers, if they get a call and they know who the person is, will call and have Crest go. So um, we have been working closely with APD and AFD to finalize you know, the SOPs to make sure that we are going to calls. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, yeah, I, I think, you know, I know that we have other, you know, bigger agenda and I, I want to get into it, but um, I mean, so these are some of the things that, you know, the next month we're, we, we, I'm going to really get more into specifics on um, because unfortunately, I, you know, some of this information that you shared right now, you shared already, you know, last month and the month beforehand, um, and I'm really looking for some of these answers, um, especially and and you know and throwing out mass general laws and HIPAA and 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 some of these other laws don't really tell me much. I, I really want more specifics as to why. Here's the thing: is this so, I can't. the The problem is is okay. Again, since coming in, I would like to sit there and say these can be done in a week, a month, two months, or whatnot, but. We are working with other departments, so I cannot push another department to get something done. I can only work collaboratively with that department to get things done. And that's one of the things that I've been very, um, very good at is making sure that I have a good relationship with these departments so that we can get this work done. Um, it is, yeah. I'm not getting pushback, you know, people are trying to get these things done, but again, you know, it's other uh, agencies are short staffed and have other things that are on their plates, too. So trying to work around and get together um, is not always, you know, these are not the things that are top on other people's list as they are on tops on my list. So okay. trying so to get across to people that these are important and they do understand that. And they've been really great in trying to help us get these things written properly. And I think that's the big thing is to do this right. These are the things that I don't think that were done necessarily correct to begin with. And now um, working together, they are getting done. Unfortunately, they're just not getting done in a timeline that you or I would like to be seen done. Okay. So, so like I said, I mean, I'm definitely going to get more into it. And then sorry, I have a one last, last question, which is, um, how many uh, responders do we have now? Last month, you you reported that um, Crest had lost four responders. Um, now so, and yes. down to we'll four. four. Yes. So right now, you're still down to four? Yes. So we are in the process now of developing the um, training for the new responders and getting that out because as situations arise and things have changed, to make sure that they're getting adequate training. So unlike when you onboard someone in your department, a regular department where you hire them, get them on board and train them on the job. These are the type of things that need to be set up in advance. So things like motivational interviewing, working with the fire department, working on trauma-informed, anti-racist. There are a lot of moving parts that we're working on. And that was something that I spent all day today on. And we're trying to work on a calendar to get people um, 
to get all these things in place so that when we do hire, and we're in the final stages now of looking at resumes and setting up interviews for next month, you know, in a couple of weeks. And that way, when we have things in place, it's not something where they have to wait, where we can hit the ground running, get them trained properly, um, and be the standout that we are. Yeah. So I, I don't know how many um, um, crest responders you have right now in terms of diversity. Obviously, that would be, you know, one of the main things, making sure that they're diverse, that they speak other languages, they have lived experience, and obviously all the other experiences in terms of de-escalation, anti-racism, and, and all those other things. So, you know, obviously those will be some of the things that, I, you know, I know I'll be interested in knowing in terms of the, the new hires that come in. Yes, we are very much looking into that. And to make sure that we have a diverse workforce and to make sure that the lived experience. The other thing is, is that, you know, the way this was originally set up when I read the report was to have a clinician with lived experience. So right now we just have the lived experience responders. So those are the type of things that eventually would like that I would like to work on is to get a more. A, to get a rounded out with a clinician on board also, besides myself as a clinician, but to have clinicians with the responders. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Camille. So yes. um, Deborah asked most of the questions I actually wanted to ask myself. Um, I didn't quite understand the categories and what rolled up into them. But um, I'll just ask one question about the category and then segue. What is it, what is the assist APD at one? Okay. Um, so I'm not sure which one that is, but what I think that might have been is that um, APD was called for an individual. And once they arrived, realized that it was actually a crest call. So, and they called us and we went. Okay. So it'd be the same as, as same as like an assist business or something. So again, if, if they are called for an individual um, and it, it comes across, this is part of the problem is, is it all depends on how calls are received by dispatch or how calls are received into crest that how we respond. So some of the things that we could be called about are not necessarily a crest call. We've had other departments call us um, for help with someone who was uh, physically injured. It was a domestic violence incident. And we were able to connect them with APD, you know, and be there as support for them. So- Oh, <laughs> I love it. Um, so that's the type of thing that we're working on is making sure that we have a really good relationship with the other departments so that they know that if they go to a call and realize, you know what? No, this is not uh, an APD call. This is a Crest call. Call Crest and we'll go. So that's part of the, the handling of the standard operating procedures and getting everything really clear in writing for all of the departments. Okay. I, I want to preface this question by saying, I'm not asking you for people's personal information, um, but you, you essentially lost half your workforce. Can you tell us what happened? Um, they moved on to different positions. Okay. And um, <clears throat> those positions, um, you're hiring for to to backfill. Those are fully funded positions of, as of the last budget, yes. So there's yes. no budget issues, okay. And um, so, you know, I, I hear what you're saying coming in five months and from, it seems as if um, you're in a situation where things are essentially starting from scratch and I think you can appreciate the frustration um, from this committee. And I get that um, there's a lot of lot being asked of you. Um, do you have what you need to make this work? Um, you know, given the 
mandate of CREST do you have? I know that you have to work with other departments, but do you have the support? Um, I know when we met with Chief Ting, even during his interview, he, he voiced publicly support for CRESS. And quite frankly, the, the biggest department that you're dealing with, I, I imagine working to make CRESS what it should be, is the police department. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, do you have that collaboration? Do you have what you need um, to make this work? I believe we do. Um, I think, and thank you for saying that, because I really believe that with this change in the people and being able to hire new people, that we can work collaboratively and that the vision that I have in aligns with the CSSJC. So that will enable me to get people on board and get them trained. And some of the other things is also coming from my firefighter background and as a clinician, um, there are other added trainings that I believe that need to be done along with working with DEI and the anti-racist lens that we've already started setting up some of these things. As for Chief Ting, Chief Ting has been instrumental in getting the dispatch set up and the dispatch, um, Jason, who is the temporary superintendent or something like that of dispatch has been phenomenal, helping us with understanding how their SOPs work and how we can take the SOPs for the police department and how they are dispatched and crescify them. So to make sure that everything is clear and everything is concise in a way that we can do our job and be protected. So everything is, and it is a long process, um, but now what's happening is we're making a really firm base to go forward. So when, when, when the public thinks about alternative to police and um, going back to Deborah's earlier point, you know, one of the biggest indicators is going to be people are going to see that when these dispatch calls come in, Crest is responding and now the police, and that is the visual alternative to policing. So, you know, when the transition committee was in effect before you came, um, we were led to believe that you guys were closer to this happening than what you're saying now. Because mm -hmm. and I and I appreciate and understand that you lost people, but you didn't lose everyone. So no. you know there there has to be some you know again and and you mentioned the noise complaint earlier under mass general laws, but noise complaint yes MGL but it's a local ordinance. the The law allows local townships to respond to those. So. Yes, Chris can respond to noise complaints. And again, I'm, I'm just trying to understand, you know, there's, and, and I hear you, new coming in, but there seems to be more delays and delays and delays. And from everyone that's listening and reading our transcripts after our meetings, that is the frustration from the public. And we're just really trying to understand, like, and, and, and we're not saying that, everything should be up and running right away. But we, it seems like we're going backwards rather than forwards. So the only thing I can say is that the way things originally came about was that things were put into place before the base was solid. So in this case, um, standard operating procedures and directives and all the nuanced things that need to be very firm in place to work with other departments, in this case, dispatch and APD, were not put into place. There were, I mean, the, the book that I was given had some of the like ideas of how things were, but nothing was written and set in stone basically is the way I want to put it. So that is the biggest problem is, is that unless you have things set up and they've been checked through the union, et cetera, then 
that makes a big difference. The other part of it is, is that again, the way things come through to dispatch and the way they're written up is not necessarily the same. So, um, and that's what I'm trying to work on is trying to get it so that we can make a very clear case and have everything set so that when a mental well-being check comes through that we know the circumstances of it and we know that this is something we're going to and that it is not something where um, APD has dealt with before and it is not simply a mental health challenge. No. I, I know that Elizabeth has a question and, and I'll ask this um, one question. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not asking you to commit to a timeline but you've been meeting with these other departments and we're now in September, 2024, past two years in the making. What is a reasonable, um, and when I'm not adding your new hires and training, but is there a reasonable expectation of when the dispatch piece of this will be, you know, completely operational? Yeah. Honestly, I couldn't tell you this month, but I would hope to be able to tell you and give you more information next month, um, depending on how many of the SOPs that we get finished. So as we, because once we get them finished, they have to be approved and then they have to go through um, the rest of the processes. So these are all things that when I came in that I did not know about, you know, so this is why like I said, I understand your frustration and yes, it's been two years, but I haven't been here for two years. I've been here for five months. So in five months, I have really made sure that things were moving along. And I know that during the interim, um, they were trying can you, to get- Can you give me one of that too? <laughs> can you go by? Stop. Wow. I so you um last question I'm sorry does that so you mentioned unions but one of the things we understood was that all those parts that were complicated things were ironed out you know their legalities were ironed out everything was settled it was now simple a matter of implementation so I just want to make sure that you're not saying that you know with these SOPs that those things still have to be ironed out as well I, 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 we they, were they, do, that. they do have to be ironed out. So it's, I, I don't know what you were led to believe before, but those, those do need to be ironed out. It is not just a simple process of writing up um, a document of how things are going to go and what's going to go and happen when. It really is um, something that has to be fully flushed out about who's going where, what the circumstances are, how it's going to be dealt with of say like a warm handoff, who's responsible for what and and the outcome and who else is involved. So um, there's a lot more to it that I didn't know about. I When we worked with the GPL, um, the Government Performance Lab to start creating a lot of these documents, um, we went about them as that they were going to be something simple and they'd be easy to just write out. But upon further reflection, finding out that there's a lot more information that needs to go into these documents than was previously believed. Okay, thank you. I think Lizette has her hand up for a while. Yes, mm -hmm. but um, I think Pamela also has her hand up, so after we'll go to Pamela. Yeah. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm sorry, but I'm gonna keep my camera off because I have a really bad sinus infection. Um, but I'm happy to see Ms. Pamela Young here today. Um and I will I have four questions, um, Camille and hello. Um, what is an administrative call? Okay, so an administrative call would be something like having to go over to pick up mail for the department or 
um, having to do in services, uh, some of the like uh, trainings that we do. So those are put down as administrative. Okay. Um, and then you also said that they're distributed resources. What type of resources? So some of the resources that we will hand out are we have our um, the cards, we have a resource guide. The other thing is some of the things we have are called our Crest Cares. So when we get calls about an unhoused person or family, that we have some items that are available for them. Uh, other things we do is during events and tabling, um, we were given some t-shirts from another department. We have t-shirts um, and uh, I'm trying to think some of the other things. It's just, it is more along the lines of like making sure that folks know about other um, avenues they have, like the bridge department, like the Amherst Survival Center, um, making sure that people know that there are other options out there. Um, we also deal with like domestic violence, um, information, um, uh, substance abuse, um, misuse, housing, you know, things that, that are in the gray area that we're able to provide and give people a sense of hope. Okay, thank you. Um, and a question in regards to the four responders that you lost, were these new responders or were they seasoned responders? Uh, new responders mostly. Okay. And uh, they left within how far apart? I'm not sure. Um, been over the last five months. So within the last five months, they... Mm -hmm scattered okay so it's not like two left in the same three weeks um we had a person that went on to one that moved into another department in the town um one went to 80 acres um and two others went on to other jobs okay thank you Pamela, do you want to go ahead? Um, thank you. I just thought a little bit of context might be helpful. Um, if you think in terms of the leadership of the Crest Department, uh, during the inaugural director's uh, term at the helm, there was no union agreement reached between the town and the police department. Um, and there were... Um, uh, uh, there were very few or just the beginnings of the SOP, so the structure that uh, Camille um, started or, um, or mentioned. During the interim leadership um, time, the town manager and the HR director um, cleared the union aspect of like uh, the police department's union contract was finalized. And um, and that was done separate and apart, like it, the that was done through the HR process, right? Press wasn't necessarily involved in that collective bargaining piece. And the interim leadership team started some of the uh, SOP process, but um, as we had stated during the during that time period, we felt like many of these decisions needed to be decisions that were going to be made and handled by the permanent director. So they were, I mean, we were um, basically trying to hold the, step, the ship steady until somebody new was at, at the helm. And I just think that that context is really import, important um, as you uh, discuss these issues. Thank you, Pamela. Um, Thank you, so Pamela. Me Camille, I just wanted to go back to what Lisette asked in terms of the um, Crest responders who left. From what I know, um, at least two of the responders, well, at least one out of the two that I know of was, a, was one of the originals, you know, and two of the responders were 
people of color, one of them, you know, spoke a different language. I mean, seasoned responders. So, the, you know, you, I mean, I, I won't even say you, I was, I'll say Crest lost at least two that I know. I don't know about the other two, but lost really good people. So that, that, that's my other fear, right? When you say that it was kind of like, well, you know, that kind of like, you know, just gets me a little bit anxious because I'm like, I know those two people that left and that was not good. You know what I'm saying? In terms of for Crest, because these were people who had been there from, you know, the beginning or almost the beginning. And like I said, you know, two people who are BIPOC, one that at least that, that spoke a different language and key, key to Crest, key. So, so you know, it's not going to be easy to find, you know, other people with that type of experience and that type of lived experience and, and everything else. So, so you know, like I said, I, I was going to wait until next month, but when kind of you respond in that way, it, it, whew, it gets me a little bit, you know, just, you know, concerned. There's there, so one of the things is, is that over the last two years of Crest, from what I've looked at, um, they went through many people that have left. OK, um, there have been. Uh, four implementation managers, um, there have been uh, of the original people, the uh, three people left before that. So change is inev inevitable. And I, rather than looking on the darker side of things, choose to see the brighter side and see that, you know, the people that left, left for their own reasons. And I wish them well. Um, actually, one of the responders comes back and talks to us. Um, they are they are going where they believe they needed to go. And um, I can't fault them. So with that, you know, I believe that in this case, change can be wonderful. And that is how I'm going to treat it. I'm not going to look back and think that this is a bad thing. I'm looking at it as forward thinking, collaborative, getting new people on board and having people that understand what how we want to move forward um, and working with new information. And thank you, Pamela, because I, some of the stuff I didn't know that a lot of the things that weren't in place uh, actually got in place within the last year. So that meant that there was a whole year that a lot of things were not in place. So I believe that while things are slow, um, that we are moving in a positive direction and as I've said before, I've asked people for the space and the grace to allow this to evolve. And change takes time. And though it is slow, it is moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. But I want to make sure that how it's moving, though, it's moving to, towards the way in terms of how CSWG envisioned it and how and, and what Crest is supposed to be about. I get concerned if it's moving forward in a different direction. Um, and that concerns me because, like I said, you know, those the, at least the two that 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 I, I'm thinking about were seasoned. They they were very good at their job. They were, ex, you know, excellent. So for them moving on, I mean, I, I'm all about you know positivity and thinking about you know everything is going to be wonderful, wonderful. But we also have to deal with reality. And you keep telling me that you know, like the way that that. I'm hearing it is basically things are back to ground zero, you know, so it, it continues to be a start and stop with Crest, right? Um, start and stop, start and stop. And uh, us as a community, we we don't know what's going on because still to this day, we don't know why the first director left because no one ever told us what happened, what didn't happen. So there you go, you know, so there's that delay again. Then the interim uh, group came in and it was again, a whole new thing. And now we have to steady the ship and so on and so forth, delay. Now you come in and you're new, I get it, give you grace, so on and so forth. But, and, and, and you know, we're thinking, okay, it's gonna grow from here, but now we're back to four responders. 
So now for me as a community member, as someone, you know, and, and I'm sorry that you are the one that's going to get this frustration. It is frustration, right? That this uh -huh. patch is not in place, that now we're back to four uh, community responders. We don't really understand what any of these kind of like, you know, what does community outreach mean? What does this citizen mean? We don't know these things, right? We need more information. You're telling me that noise complaint is is nowhere to be found yet in terms of it being um, uh, something that Crest is going to respond to. So, you know, so these are the things that really like when you see it moving forward, I'm just like, OK, where are you moving towards? Because I don't know if you're moving towards the same place that, you know, CSWG intended Crest to go and also CSSJC wants Crest to go. And I think that's a, a wonderful um, idea. And that's what's happening. It just, and, and I understand when you said it is going back to base. And honestly, that's how I feel like it is. It is a baseline. And you cannot build off of something unless you have a good base. And that is one of the things that I am very um, excited about is to have a firm base and to make sure that things are moving forward from this base so that it doesn't have to happen that, you know, if a responder decides to leave, that we have to start all over again. So having these systems in place makes it easier. So having a very good, solid training schedule and yearly training for the responders and having that all in place makes it easier so that people know, okay, that yearly people have to have CPR. Yearly people have to have a refresher on motivational ear, um, interviewing. Yearly people have to go through um, trauma-informed training. So those are the type of things that I want to get set so that we don't have to worry about things being scattered and all over the place. The interim team put some of those things ready to be in place and had the ideas with the intention that they were waiting for the permanent director, in this case, me, to come in and really take off with that. And I appreciate the work that the interim um, team did in getting the um, union all set. So that it made it easier that when I came in, okay, here's the union. When I wrote the uniform policy, once that was written up, it was, um, I did it in collaboration with the responders to make sure I had buy-in, which is always important. And then after that, it went to HR, it went to the town manager, and I also sent it to the union rep. rep so that everyone would understand that everything is in place and there is a good base. So yes, and. And I do understand, like I said, I understand the frustration of the town and our BIPOC community, but in order to make things go smoothly, sometimes we have to step back and get our base set. Okay, does anyone else have questions? If not, we'll move on to DEI. Thank you. Thank you, Camille. So, um, as I stated last month, there's not going to be much to report on the DEI side. Um, Philip is in week five of his position. Um, on September 2nd or 3rd, we welcomed our AmeriCorps member member Melina to the department and she's spending uh, two days with DEI and two days with Cress. Um, so things are still pretty much in the planning stages for DEI. Um, the department is participating in the UMass off-campus resource fairs that are occurring um, tonight, next Wednesday, and the following Tuesday. Um, the department will be participating in the block party um, in town and there will be space for members from this committee and the um, Human Rights Commission and Disability Access Advisory Commission to join us at the, as we're tabling at that event. Uh, there will be a staff workshop um, on the 20th of the month and the, on the 26th, the uh, department will be working with our beloved community 
um, group. Um, and the notice about that event should be posted on the town's website um, tomorrow. Uh, the topic for the beloved community event will be uh, addressing some issues around America's racial history. Uh, I know that you're um, interested to learn what, if anything, has uh, occurred with the Resident Oversight Board. There's been no movement since last month. Um, the town manager has been on vacation for three weeks and he is still scheduled to meet with the preferred consultant. Um, I know that there have been some emails, um, I think actually on Monday of this week between the town manager's office and the consultant trying to finalize a date for them to meet but um, nothing, there hasn't been any, any additional movement on that issue. Um, and so I believe that is it for the DEI. So um, thank you, Pamela, appreciate it. And appreciate you and uh, um, Philip attending our meetings, because like I said last month, I think it would be critical for DEI to continue to be uh, a part of our meetings and letting us know what is happening, um, especially since, again, that was uh, why CSWG um, recommended DEI um, creation and really foresaw DEI working closely with C CSSJC to make sure that these recommendations will come to fruition. So I have a, a few questions. One, I'll just start with the block party. Um, like we did last year, I think some of us are very interested in tabling with you all. So I think the thing would be, because I, I know I would need to get it on my schedule sooner rather than later, to kind of send some time slots um, like was done last year so that then we can know who would be, you know, tabling at what time. Um, but like I said, you know, the sooner you can send that out to us, um, the better. Um, and then in terms of the resident oversight board, I do have, because, you know, we include in the packet the questions that Allegra and I sent to uh, Paul Bockelman. And in terms of the resident oversight, he said, after the first request for proposals failed, that the town revised and reissued the RFP. This proved to be successful. We are nearing completion on negotiating a contract. A, develop resident oversight board policies and procedures and provide training to town staff and resident oversight board members. I anticipate this contract will be signed in the very near future. Um, again, that's all well and good, but it doesn't really give us a timeline. It doesn't give us a deadline. It doesn't tell us when this is happening. Um, you know, like you said, he's on vacation now, you know, nearing possibly meeting. Uh, but, you know, for me, and, and we will be responding to the town manager, it's going to be, okay, what's the timetable on this? Because this was already supposed to have happened. Um, and, you know, and it was the whole process of hiring that other consultant, blah, 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 blah. And yet we're still in the same place. Um, you know, three years plus after making the recommendation for the resident oversight board. So, I, but I guess you, you you don't have anything else to, to add to that. So nope. I'm just going to continue to I say did, that. I'm sorry, but I didn't understand. Was there, that sounded like a no, statement? No, no, but yeah, it's more so a statement because right. like okay. I said, it doesn't seem like there's anything else that you can add to that. And then my question though, because a lot of our questions to the town manager, which was in the packet, um, it was around the youth empowerment um, center, which we're very concerned about, uh, because we we I'm I'm flabbergasted right now, befuddled, um, confused in terms of who handles what, what has been you know because again, I, Pamela, I think you you I think you want to kind of appreciate why I'm confused because didn't your office at for a long period of time, even with the, uh, what was the name of the, the 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 person there that you all kind of work with that comes in and helps you all for like, I don't know, 20 hours or something. What, where, where's, where's that person from? Remember there was one that had come to help you all out, you and Jennifer? They're the only person who has worked in our office has been um, an AmeriCorps member. Yeah, the AmeriCorps. From, so, yeah. from the very beginning um, of that member's so this is our second year hosting an AmeriCorps member and sharing that position with uh, the Crest Department. Okay, the so the AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps member. Yeah, so yes. um, the AmeriCorps program has a focus of working on youth empowerment. And so it has always been that, that the person who held that position would be involved in those issues. But from um, over a year now, the DEI department has not been tasked with 
uh, the oversight of the Youth Empowerment Center. We offered um, to conduct some youth in empowerment programming, but we're not in charge of, um, of working to, on the Youth Empowerment Center. And then I've stated that repeatedly for many, many, many months at this point. Well, but but again, you, you keep on saying many, many, many months, but the, the point of the matter is, is that it's been very confusing information because like you said, right, you, well, it was Jennifer and the Maricor member were doing surveys, which I don't even know what happened with that for youth programming, which never, nothing materialized because remember, then you were switched into, into doing Crest, Crest, and then everything kind of stopped. So kind of saying that you've been telling us for the past year that, that you have, your DI has nothing to do with youth and empowerment and youth programming really yep. it, it it doesn't really make any sense to me because let your me office take, wasn't, the, well, take this let opportunity me, let me just finish to let, me finish. let me finish can i finish can i finish please so that so so basically um you know the, the programming was coming out of your office or at least there was an attempt for youth programming to happen and then we even discussed with you at different points like i remember talking about hey what about this place or that place for youth empowerment centers, possible locations for youth empowerment. And so at that point, you never said, and maybe the town manager hadn't made a, 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 a so even the town manager saying, oh no, it was the finance department, the rec department, they're always entrusted with the youth uh, empowerment center. That was not made clear to us. I just want to say that publicly right now. So that doesn't look like we've been in like some fictional planet not knowing what was happening. Because the thing is, is that the information was not shared with us, okay? So when you keep saying that you've been telling this, us that for the past year, I, I, I say no, that is not okay. correct. So I actually, okay? I'm gonna have to um, to disagree with you but on, on what I've been saying, but let me be very, very clear, or at least as clear as I can be at this point. Um, and as you just alluded to, the change in assignment from being the sole director of the DEI department to having both responsibilities for DEI and CRESS did result in a number of things um, falling off the plate. Um, we only had our AmeriCorps member last year for half a year. We didn't have the person for the full year. And so while that person did work with Jennifer on trying to do a survey um, of, uh, of the youth in town to sort of uh, identify youth needs, um, self-identified youth needs. That request actually came as a request from this committee who felt like it was important for the youth to be involved in directing the programming. And this committee was involved in looking at the survey, um, was aware that the survey had gone out, asked for the survey to be modified so that it included questions that the committee um, felt were important to include. And so work did begin on, on that, but um, unfortunately it did not lead to any additional programming or, or come to fruition. But I, so I think the the, the points of clarity I, I'd like to, to make are that um, from the very beginning, the DEI department has stated, or I should state now to, just to be clear. So the DEI department is not tasked with um, uh, establishing the Youth Empowerment Center. The D -D DEI department with CRESS is sharing an AmeriCorps member. The AmeriCorps program requires that the AmeriCorps member work on youth empowerment. And once again, this year, it is our hope that the AmeriCorps member will work with DEI and CRESS to establish and conduct youth empowerment programming. Um, that's what we are committing to, um, having some programming workshops, opportunities uh, around youth uh, youth empowerment. And in addition to that, both um, Camille as the CREST director and Philip as the assistant DEI director are involved in the planning that's occurring outside of the department. So, you know, um, language gets, uh, misquoted or misunderstood or um, are, are utilized uh, differently. So I made the mistake of saying that there was a town task force. It's not a task force, working group. I don't know what 
term you want to use or the the town manager wants to use, but there are a group of town staff members who are working on the establishment of the process for the youth empowerment center, but it is not it is not the sole responsibility of the DEI department, and um, both Cress and the DEI department have staff who are a part of that group that has no name or, you know, I, it, it hasn't formally that I know of have, have a name. Um, yeah. So yeah, and, and that, that's clear. Well, okay. So now just to, to make sure I got it right. So, so DI has nothing to do with the youth empowerment center, but yet DI is still going to do youth empowerment programming because of AmeriCorps. Is that it? Because without AmeriCorps, you wouldn't do youth empowerment. No, so I I think that's um that's not quite how I would characterize it. Because no. in year in in year one of my appointment to this position, um, and discussions with this committee, um it, the report of the community uh, um, safety working group were discussed where there were specific types of youth empowerment programming were discussed in the report that this committee hoped would come to fruition. I think ideally in a in a youth empowerment center, but the commitment was made by this department that, you know, I can't stand up a youth empowerment center, I don't have the funds, but some of that programming could, could be offered from the DEI department. And that was stated in year one. It was re reiterated last year, but that did not occur for a number of reasons. One, the assignment, as you alluded to, to the CRESS interim leadership team, to the fact that we only had an AmeriCorps member for part of the year, um, and we were just simply um, unsuccessful in getting things done. I, I don't see there being any inconsistency in the establishment of a youth empowerment center by the town and with DEI making a commitment to offer some of the, the of the, to to offer some programs or to to lean into that uh, into that space i think that's a natural um place for this department to be involved in and so we're have restated our commitment to do so well yeah i i get it now that you're saying all of that but like i said i, I it was me it was just kind of frustrating me when you would just say, I've been saying this for over a year, but now at least you, you, you're hearing yourself, right? And you're clarifying that it was very confusing, right? The fact that, you know, one, we didn't know where the Youth Empowerment Center actually sat. And finally, we understand, I guess, from the the, the answers that the town manager said that it's with the rec and, and the finance department, but yet you still do, and with your clarity, you still ha do have a piece of the Youth Empowerment Programming Right. So, again, it's not totally out of your bailiwick. So I just want to make sure that we fully understand that and are clear in terms of what you are going to be dealing with, because obviously the AmeriCorps member is going to be helping so that we can assist with that and make sure that it, it, it gets done in a way that's obviously very helpful to, to, to all communities, but especially BIPOC communities and marginalized communities. So I just wanted to kind of make that clear. So. And then moving on from that, right, is the the answers that that the town manager stated, because like you said, I mean, yeah, you know, there was words thrown about possible task force, possible committee, that there's a DEI representative and Crest representative on this possible group, right? I'll just say group at this point, because the town manager is really not being transparent. That's the word that we usually say, right? When we talk about town business and town information, non-transparency, right? Because even in this question and answer that, that he sent back to us, there's a lot of non-transparency, right? It's youth empowerment center, including rec, finance, DEI, CRES, et cetera, is working on this. <laughs> so this amorphous situation. So it really doesn't tell us nothing. As, yeah, I, as I can't town, speak to well, the well, town manager. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not saying to you, I'm talking about the town manager right now, because I'm talking about his his response. I know you don't have, because you've told us this ad nauseum that you don't have any information in regards to that. Fine. So let me kind of make the statement in regards to it. So basically, you know, we will be getting back to the town manager, you know, Allegra and I, and, and asking more questions because again, lack of transparency, because it still doesn't give us any information. And, and him not saying 
who this group is, what this group is doing, Donahue Institute, what they're doing, where's the funding going? Because I'm sure Donahue Institute is getting paid. So if it's not from the 500,000, where is the money coming from? I want to know that. You know, so again, you did not provide any of that information. I don't think you have that information. So I, I won't even pose it to you. So anyway, so those are some of the things that are worrying me because it seems as if things are happening behind the scenes and MSSC, SSJC have not been shared any of that information. One of the nice things that could have happened could have been the town manager could have actually let the CSSJC know that one, there was, you know, Donahue Institute was hired to do God knows what, I guess a feasibility study um, that, you know, there was the, a group, a group, <laughs> I won't use task force, I won't use committee, I'll say a group that was put together to discuss the, the Youth Empowerment Committee. Possibly it would have been nice if actually he had asked if one of us CSSJC members had wanted to be part of that group, right? But no, that wasn't, that didn't happen. So anyway, so I'm just saying these things so that the public understands the status of the situation, right? Because we will be going back and asking more questions. Um, I am thankful that he answered some, a little bit of it, but there's still a lot more questions to be asked because this youth empowerment center is something that would be key to our community. Our youth need a center. I get communications from the community like almost every day saying, why isn't the Youth Empowerment Center yet in place after three years plus of the recommendations from CSWG? Why don't our youth, right? And it's, and we're this Youth Empowerment Center is for all youth, but obviously youth BIPOC-led, it should be youth BIPOC-led, which was what was in our CSWG um, recommendations, and it should focus on culture, it should focus on providing a space for all our youth, and our youth need it, because our youth are continually being targeted out there and not having the resources to be successful, right? And they're stereotyped, they're all of that. And so we need the space. So we're not going to stop in terms of monitoring and asking more and more questions and demanding transparency. We want transparency. What is going on? <laughs> well, if I didn't I use that... the right word, and I'm not talking to you, Pamela, I'm, I'm just saying, again, like I said, I'm making a comment, general. We want transparency. And if I didn't use the right word in terms of group, I don't care. I just want to know what these meetings are about. Why is there a mystery? Why can't we know? Why can't the community know? Really makes zero sense to me. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. More to come because obviously um, there'll be more, uh, another round of, of questions going um, his way. So I'd, I'd like to um, have an opportunity to respond to that uh, comment because uh, I think it's important for the community to know that those questions which you're asking are important to, to be asked, um, but posing them um, during the question session for me seems uh, misdirected because I don't have a response to them. And um, so the posing them to the town manager as you did, um, I think is the more appropriate place for the comments. Okay. All right. Thank you. So if, if I may ask one question on the Youth Empowerment Center, um, because I, I read um, one of Paul's responses to the questions, and it was actually very telling, because it said, ultimately, it will be up to the town council to determine if the town moves forward on a Youth Empowerment Center. Is there no commitment to build the Youth Empowerment Center? So I don't, again, know that I can respond to the town manager's uh, answers because they, I mean, he did not discuss them with me. He received the questions from this committee and then crafted his own um, uh, answers to it. I think that's a question that has to be directed to, to him. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? I don't think so. I just wanted to do a time check that it is 7.50. So I know that gives Camille about 10 minutes and Everald about 40 minutes. So I just wanted to throw that out. To the... So I, there, 
there is just one last thing um, that I wanted to say in, in, res um, in response to Lisette's uh, comment about my appearance at the this meeting, which is to just reiterate that the intention for the DEI department is that the director, myself, and the assistant director, Philip, will alternate our attendance. So one of us will be here, but I will not be here at every at every meeting. And with that, I will bid you all adieu. Thank you, Pamela. Did you want to lead us through some of the more strategic planning stuff? So thank you. Um, so I know we have a standing agenda um, that we deal with and I, I, I was wondering if given where we are with our standing agenda where th things seem to just be essentially getting kicked down the road for the most part, um, <clears throat> are there any goals that as a committee that we can take on that have measurable results that we can deliver um, set annual goals that we can measure at the end of the year to say, you know, this was a goal that we set, that we did this, maybe things that um, we as committee can control. And um, I, I just don't want when the public, you know, those in attendance and those who watch when they can just see us just having things and like no measurable results. Because again, um, I, I am very concerned as, you know, with Crest, um, Youth Empowerment Center, um, Resident Oversight Board, and, and those are not things that is in our direct control. And so were there, it was meant to be a conversation is, are there things that we as a committee can do or things that we can take on that we can do and measure results on? And one of the things I, um, I was thinking about was, um, Ms. Pat has consistently brought up ARPA funds. Um, and I don't think we ever took that on to say, um, let's look into this. And so um, maybe things like that, that members bring to the committee to say, you know, here are things that we have concerns about. And is this something that the committee can look into? And maybe even though we may not get, um, say, satisfaction for everyone but at least we can present to the community that says you presented it you brought this to the board we did due diligence spoke to um town different people and this is what we found and you know maybe that kind of measurable results or recommendations that we can do and and in terms of the speaker series too i think it I think it goes um, into that that part of it as well. Um, it's all right, you can yeah. you can check in with her. It's fine. You can check yeah. in with her. She's loud. We have and all as, been there, so we yeah. <laughs> and, and as and as part of that too, it's um, segue into you know thinking about a speaker series, and um, I know we've tried to have Paul come to this committee. Um, it's you know things like that is try to get different people that impacts our community's lives to come and talk about decisions that they make and what considered, you know, how the BIPOC community as a whole is factored into making those decisions. Um, I, I know sitting on the ZBA, I actually want to invite um, people from um, Valley CDC and um, now with um, Wayfinders to come talk about how can the community qualify um, for these low income housing. So things like that. We had Chief Ting um, a month and a half ago. Um, I, I thought his presence here was good. Um, hopefully that was not his last presence. Um, and maybe um, we can, you know, people like that, that impacts your community, we can invite 
and have them come and talk about decisions they make and how they impact our community and how they factor in the BIPOC community before they make those kind of decisions. So those are thoughts I had um, about those two categories. <clears throat> so, um, uh, Avril, can you also, because I think what would be helpful, and then I, I do have some thoughts about some of these things that you you um, brought up, but also could you finish like the last one in terms of membership, what you were thinking about in terms of us discussing? So, yes, um, I think we lost, um, and forgive me if I forgot her name, um, it's Isabella, Isabella. And so mm -hmm. I've been asking around, um, people to join. So, um, I, I, I don't know how we do recruitment for these committees. Um, so is there something formal? Is there a process? Um, because, um, our, I, I know you mentioned, um, earlier that there is, um, potentially two people. Mm -hmm. um that is available um is that that uh -oh. Oh, we just lost him Emerald, you froze. You went away. You dropped away yeah i know um. <laughs> so um hopefully he'll be back but i okay. guess he, he spoke about the speaker series and the goals um that we can talk to him about uh, let's give him a minute, see if he comes back since he's the one kind of steering this ship right now, this portion of the meeting. And I guess I don't, this is a question for Camille. I don't know if you would have the answer to this, but in turn, I know that like the town will post things on their website saying these are all the open things that we have, all the open boards and committees, and then this is this the form you fill out. But I'm wondering if for something more targeted. Uh -huh. Oh, hi, Emerald's back. OK. Um, Apologies. Someone called and kicked me out. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so I was just saying, in terms of recruitment, I know that the town has their little website with their little <laughs> list of things with the community activity form attached, but thinking about at least for our committee with one it's seat specifically set aside for a youth member, is that something where the town would consider like reaching out to the superintendent and saying, hey, can you put this in the superintendent's newsletter or something like that, which is at least would conceivably go to every family in the district who signs up with their email to receive communications from the school district so that it's targeting you know, the you know, parents or maybe students that could then say, oh, this looks like a good activity for somebody to do. And I know when I was at the high school in the guidance office, we had like a list of volunteer activities and, and like community jobs. So I don't know if that's a place that even still exists because it was like binders. I don't know if they have like binders of paper anymore in high school, but um, or if it, everything is like electronic at this point. But that was another you know, I got my first job in high school by going through that binder. So I don't know if if that's something that still exists. If if the town would be willing to consider doing something like outreach to the schools for the for this specific one member spot on our particular committee, because I do think that getting the word to the youth is hard if you're not actually talking to any youth about it. All right. Allegra, I think that's a wonderful idea is actually to, you know, um, talk to the schools. Um, and one of the things is that when we have tabled, we have spoken to youth about um, who've been interested about joining the CSSJC. So I, I think that's a wonderful idea and that um, I could be one to, to reach out if that's something that you'd like. I think that would be great. Okay. So Everald, I know that um, you know, you were you got kicked out from the remote world. So I don't I don't know what else you wanted to add in terms of that membership kind of portion. So yeah, I, I, I do know um I I have a high school senior in mind um that I just haven't run into him recently that I wanted to ask about. Um he is very socially active. Um I 
I, just, I don't know if he has the bandwidth given all that he does. Um, but I do want, I, I had, so before I reached out to him, I wanted to know that if I could actually find somebody, if I found somebody, would he be acceptable? Um, so, but I still think, um, Camille, that you should still reach out and have something go to the schools, but I will still um, ask this person as well, just in case he's interested. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, whoever we have that would be interested, but like you said, I think, you know, we all know a lot of young people that would be exceptional and great, but they are also over-involved or involved in a gazillion things. So the thing is, is that we need someone that obviously has that kind of interest, passion for the, for, for the work, right? But also has the time and can commit to it, right? Because we want someone that's going to have a voice because we need to hear from young people. We want young people's ideas. We want them fully a part of this group, right? Um, and so that's, you know, that would be the thing, right? When we're doing that recruitment is to kind of talk to young people to be like, okay, this is, this is what this would look like. This is, you know, what the expectations would be too. It's not just to, like, for me, it's not just about just filling up, you know, just have a youth on there that's really not going to participate. <laughs> you know, or be engaged or anything like that. Just to say we have a youth on a committee. That's not the point. The point is to have someone that's going to be engaged fully, part of it, committed, is going to speak, you know? And obviously I understand that it could be a little bit too daunting, right? To be the the the, the youngest in the room and, and be able to speak. But that's where we would be helpful. We could mentor, we would be willing to help and things like that and coach and assist and all of those things, you know, but it would still need to be someone that has that time commitment and be able to kind of be engaged um, with us. Yeah, and and that's a very good point. And Camille, um, when when you reach out to town manager, um, if it's a matter of, you know, if the school said, you know, can someone come in and talk to potential students who may be interested, um, I'm happy to do it. Um, if if that's necessary to do. So if that's, so you can put that out there as well, that somebody is going to come in and talk to students about this as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know that there's also the uh, process of interviews, et cetera. So for it, um, yeah. for the members. Okay. Thank you. Um, and have a good month, folks. I'll see you again next month. Bye, Camille. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. It's also like a really good way to get people, hopefully, that would be invested and involved. So I think that's great that you have somebody in mind. Um, so do we want to turn out to some more details about our next coming months in terms of like what we might want to have as people come like invite people i can't well speak. well let me let me i guess i wanted to if we're just going to go into i guess i wanted to talk about you know some of the things that you post right so you know you talk, so we talk about goals we talk about the speaker series and then obviously talking about a membership but also i think you had put there you know structure of the meeting length of time you know different things that we'd also need to kind of get into but and that's more kind of internal to us which i think would be important and i think how we might be able to do this because we do have a standing agenda, which I think the community is interested in and we are interested in, right? Crest, DI, youth empowerment, things like that, that we need to continue to 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 to, to talk about. I mean, I don't I don't know if that's kind of avoidable, you know what I'm saying, for us, because th those are things that, you know, the community is following and they're asking us questions. Cause I know I get questions about those things all the time. And so if we're not discussing them, then, you know, but the thing is in terms of like goals and measurable results. I mean, obviously, um, Everell, the, the easy one is, yeah, we have we have press, we have DI, we have youth empowerment, we have a resident oversight board, right? Those four that are key ones, right? But, but there's a ton of other recommendations that we haven't even touched upon, like the multicultural center would be another key one. And then some of the other ones that that was stated in, you know, part one, some of part one, and then part two, right? Um, so So in terms of goals, and like you said, some of it is not within our, our kind of purview because it's tied into town managers, tied into town councils, tied into other town departments, but we still have to have them on. Even if it is like, okay, did we meet some of these recommendations, you know, this year? You know, probably not, but how far did we get in each of them? 
You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's how we, we kind of, you know, and maybe we need to create some type of graph or whatever that kind of lists all these recommendations, right, from the CSWG and then kind of maps out, you know, you know, year one, year two, year three, what have we done? You know, hopefully to say we attained because at the end of CSWG, we were able to say, wow, we got the funding for Crest. Boom, Crest is created. Wow, we got DEI created. Boom, and the funding is there. Wow, we got, um, you know, CSSJC, the standing committee created, boom. You know what I'm saying? Wow, we got money for the youth empowerment thing because that $500,000 was put in place right after our recommendation. So we had a lot of like, okay, measurable, boom, boom, boom. But since then, right, making sure that these departments, you know, stay the course and are, are following their mission and have the funding and have the staffing and have, now that's been, you know, obviously more complicated. And then resident oversight board and multicultural center, youth empowerment center, none of that has, has, has gone into creation, right? So, okay. So then there's that. And then you talk about, okay, there's ARPA funds, but there's a gazillion other goals, right? We talked about this year, the school committee and the budget situation which was a mess. That was a mess. I mean, people don't even know that after all of those meetings that, that we went through, there were still budget cuts. They still let go of positions. The, the, the restorative justice position at the high school, that was gotten rid of. And the one at, at the middle school, you know, after all of the work that was done, I was showing up at the school committee, all of those things. So there's a huge need there because at the end of the day, it's the BIPOC, um, you know, young people, marginalized young people that are suffering with through these budget cuts. Because <clears throat> I'm telling you, the more affluent families, they're able to get family. I mean, they were able to get tutors. They're able to get language tutors. They're able to get this and that and the third, right, to supplement whatever is, is being lost, to their kids, right? But or you know, therapists or this or that, the other. Now it's the other uh, our our community that is is getting lost, right? Because of these budget cuts in the schools, that now they don't have these services in the schools that they would have had, right? So it's just like it, that that's not acceptable. So we have the school committee. We have like you know, other goals that we I'm sure we can. So my thing is, how do we structure it? Right. How are we going to, you know, and then the speaker series, too, um, you know, so I, I think we need to do a little bit more of that strategic kind of because how long do we want to meet for? Right. If we're going to do a speaker speaker, because right now how we've done the speaker series is like organic. Right. We have an issue. We invite someone come in like we've had Barbara Love come in. We've had, you know, different people come in when we had an issue. Right. To, to discuss about things. But it's not as if you know, we, we were like, okay, every month we're going to have someone come in and talk for 10 minutes to talk for 15 minutes, you know? I mean, we can, but then we got to bump this and we got to do, you know what I'm saying? So those well, are some of the I, things that... Yeah, so the speaker series was not meant to, it, it wasn't meant to bump anything. To your point, it's if we have an issue, if we can identify someone who's at the helm of this issue, that's who we want to hear from. Um, But yeah, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll just keep talking Allegra and Lissette. It's just, I mean, I think those are some of the things that we need to think about, right? Is, and and I and I like what Everall is saying, right? We can have a little bit more structure to our meeting so that then we can see, okay, can we get to this? Can we get to that? Can we get to the third? Um, so as, so that then we can kind of like um, track it, right? Throughout the year. To then say, okay, we were able to accomplish this, or we weren't able to accomplish this, and why? Because that could give us some clarity too, right? As to why we weren't able to accomplish it, because then it'll show that okay, there's certain gaps and things like that. So I'm I'm all for that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but my thing is, is that we need to we need we need to create that type of organization, knowing that though we we still have you know all these pressing issues that for us. Um, you know, again, it, it, I want to kind of be clear that with CSWG, when, when you know, as the orig original member of CSWG, the only one now on, on CSSJC, is to kind of bring that back to when we made our recommendations, um, the town thought that what was going to happen as usual, as what recommendate what usually happens to recommendations, which is those recommendations were going to be put on a shelf somewhere collecting dust, and they were going to be forgotten, 
right? That was really the intent <laughs> of these recommendations, were for them to be forgotten. But for us with CSWG, we had hindsight and we were like, no, that was not going to happen. And me, when I even interviewed for CSWG, that's what I said. I was like, I'm not going to waste my time on a committee that's then or group, right? It was a working group on a group that is going to make recommendations that's going to then collect dust, right? And so that's why we created CSSJC, right? As a standing committee to one, one of the main charges of CSSJC is to, is to, Make sure that all of the recommendations within on CSWG will come to fruition, and then two, monitor those recommendations, and then three, obviously, deal with any other live issue, uh, pressing matter that comes up, right? That deals with safety, social justice, equity, inclusion, diversity, blah, blah, blah. So those are the kind of like the three kind of buckets, you know, that that us as CSSGC, you know, deal with, you know, need to deal with, and so. How we go about doing it is obviously something that Everett is bringing up, which is great. You know, if we do it more structured and find more time and, and things like that, or, or or be more effective with our time or whatever. I, I, I don't know. But I'm just saying those are the three buckets. And, and we shouldn't. Just wondering about in terms, because I obviously think like the Crescent DEI updates are really important, but they also almost always take up at least like an hour and a half of our time. And then we're left with seven other agenda items that we never fully complete. Um, I do like the format of what Camille sent out today, but I think there are a few things that we might like to see as like ongoing additions to that so I'm wondering if maybe sending if people had like things that they would like to see added to her little template and maybe we can send that to her and say you know this is great and it you know we can put it up on the screen but we don't also like we can hope if we get it beforehand we can all read through it beforehand obviously putting it in the public packet is important and having it up there for people but I think if we're not going over item by item something but we come informed enough with questions about what we're seeing maybe we can try and whittle that time that we sp spend on those issues down a little bit though it is also really important and especially when there has been so much transition to see that because I, I do feel like a lot of the times we're just having the same conversation over and over and over again and not much has changed um and I think and, and that puts I'm, people in maybe a defensive place sometimes. So, yeah, and and I'm not suggesting that we get rid of any of those, yeah. um, but maybe alternate um, the issues for different meetings. Mm -hmm. And that that summary that was given to us for Cress, I think like us, the public are going to have more questions than answers <laughs> um, because it didn't tell us anything, quite frankly because I didn't understand what they meant. So um, maybe for our agenda, we accept those, but we ask her for like a full more detailed so we can read as what rolls up into this. And quite frankly, um, it, maybe the whole thing doesn't make its way to the agenda, but at least the public can see it um, somewhere on our site. But again, that didn't really tell us much of anything as to what happened with that. Well, and, I, will, and, I, th I think it would be important, though, for it to make it into the agenda, because I think it's yeah. important for the public to know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like how it's breaking down. But like you said, like what you provided, though, needs so much more clarity. And also telling us that there's 219 calls. Well, what does that compare to for, you know, July and June and everything? You know what I'm saying? So just saying August 2024. So I think, you know, what what like we're saying um, and you're saying also kind of all combines, which is we need to give her some kind of um, direction. Right. This is what we're looking for. Right. This is what we want on a monthly basis. Give it to us, you know, a few days beforehand so that we can understand it as a, a, a committee. And also it can be, uh, you know, put into the packet because this was something that we talked about last month. And that's why she included it in the packet. And that's why it was just kind of like, hey, we need to see it because it was actually, you know, a few community members in the last meeting who said, yeah, we want to see that information. You know, we want to be informed. And for a lot of community members, and they talked about it, this is their only opportunity. And there's a lot of them, even some town counselors who said that 
they don't really get a lot of this information even in the town council. They learn a bunch of stuff from our our um, meetings, you know, on a monthly be uh, on a monthly basis. So that if we're not sharing this information, they're clueless. You know, you know. So that's why for me, and I think for all of us, right, we've been kind of like transparency, 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 and also sharing it with the community because this is their opportunity, right? And that's what I always get from people, Deborah. We are. This is, you know. We didn't know this was happening if it wasn't for CSSJC opening up the doors and letting us like look in, you know. And I, and I imagine, um, so we we get um, monthly data. Um, it, it may help for our conversations that we get it in a f format where okay, here is July, here is August. It's, it isn't just random every month. Like we can make actual inner conversations, have something to compare with at the same time to say, okay, you know, things are not moving. We This is the same numbers as last month, or this is the same subset of last month. So, you know, what's changing? Um, I, I, th I think that may be actually very helpful um, rather than just the static each month. You know? Yep, exactly. I totally agree with you. So I think like, can we um, maybe just like if each of us could commit and I think we need to say like a by when so that then we can get this to Camille, like maybe within, let's say if we do it within the next two weeks so that then she has two weeks before our next meeting to kind of put it together to kind of get to, um, you know, Allegra and I maybe, you know, if each of you could just send it to us because three is not, what what what's the quorum? I guess I'm trying to figure out what's the quorum, <laughs> so that I then think, you can get ah. Uh? I think technically the quorum is the four of us because as a full committee we're seven. Although that's oh yeah, that's true. Since we're not yeah committee. Yeah. So then if we so if so if like let's say let's say you send whatever it is that you want on this report, the monthly reports to Allegra and I, and then Avril you send it to Allegra and I, then we can kind of put something together then send it back to you all. And then we can, you know, kind of edit it and stuff so that then we can get it to Camille, you know, like in, in, in maybe like this week, let's see, let me look at the calendar here. Ta -ta 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 -ta. So we are on the 11th. So let's say if we by, by, you know, by the 18th, if you all can get kind of initial comments to Allegra and I about what it is that you would want. So looking at her current, report and I think she's given some other reports in the past too which will probably be on our website what are some of the information that will be helpful right so that we can provide that to her so that then she can attempt to hopefully put something together the next time that could come closer to what we're looking for because I don't think she'll you know of course you know it's a process so come closer and then the next time hopefully it can be what it is we're looking for, you know? So by if we do it by the next by the 18th, if you all get us initial thoughts, and of course Allegra and I will also be doing the same thing, right? And kind of put it, pull it all together. And then by the 25th, we get her something. Okay. So that then by the 25th, we get her something, then she would have two weeks. Um, because our next meeting will be the ninth. She would have two weeks, but hopefully she could share it with us at least by the seventh, you know, because that's when agenda has to go out. Right. Allegra, you were saying that's the last date, like but it's the Monday before the, the meeting. If our next meeting is the ninth, correct. Yes. Um. So if our next meeting is the ninth, I think. Usually, I tr I liked getting things done by the Friday before. That was how Jennifer always did it. Just and it okay. for some reason it made me feel like that was Better. really going to happen in time. Like I think the last it could be would be the seven. Right. It has to be the forty eight hours. But but let's say the fourth. Let's say the fourth. Then yeah. you know we would just ask her to, um, you know, once we give her that feedback, uh, by the twenty fifth. That would give her like a week and two days, right, to kind of put something together because she has the data. It's just like how she's going to be crunching the numbers and then, you know, getting us the information. She would have that that time period to then get us something by the fourth yeah. so that then we could um, 
you know, have some time to look at it and then include it in our packet. Okay. Good. I like that. And I good. feel like if we're going to do this with Crest, we might as well do it with DEI as well. Yes. I mean, I yes. I didn't have something yes. written for us, but I think, I think in a sense, there's maybe less and more, you know, I think we know usually she updates about what events DEI is doing, what trainings with what departments, um, and then our, Rob and Youth mm -hmm. Empowerment. Yeah, well, um, now it wouldn't, wouldn't be it wouldn't be youth empower it would be youth empowerment programming. Right. Let's be clear, youth empowerment programming, and we got to call it as such because it's been so confusing. But but the fact what they're doing with youth empowerment, and then we would put like a miscellaneous too because it mm -hmm. it, it kind of changes, you know. But yeah, I think we should we should ask both of them for for a report, and then so let's let's so when I say that in terms of the dates, the eighteenth, the initial comments and then by the 25th we kind of have our finalized um um comments to to them we should have one for DI and one for 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 Camille. Yeah that would be good. So that then we we could review it beforehand and be prepared for the meeting and also we can include it in the packet for for the community. All right. So that would be a, a a big help. Um, but but Ever, what do you think though in terms of like goals? I guess if we if we were to at least look at goals for this meeting, because then you know maybe we can talk about speaker series and membership more the next. Well, maybe next time let's let's tackle speaker series and then the following time tackle membership. But for goals, what 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 what's kind of your vision? Given given like what I've said, I don't know what else you want to. Add to it, Allegra Lissette. But you did mention you did mention a lot of things that we actually don't talk about um, in our meetings, and maybe we can bring some of those here. Um, the the my only big concern again is um, measurable, and if it's something that we can deliver to the community to say, um, you know, here's something that we took on, and here is an, an end result or a near end result. So. Um, that that's my only um, concern about that. But um, <clears throat> if if there are things that, um, and, and again, given that this may be one of the only forms that the public has to raise certain issues, maybe take some things that the public say and see what we can do with them. Yeah. Okay. So do we want to start coming up with like a list of things? I mean, I don't know if if, if we have the bandwidth to do that plus DI. <laughs> you know, we and that's the thing. We, busy people. And that's the thing. We we may not, and you know, we may have to um not ignore them, but not take on all of them all at the same time. It may have to be prioritize what um what we focus on. And we just ask the public to understand that we can't take everything on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, at least I, then. All right, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say. I think in terms of like a goal, something that we could that would be measurable would be you know over the next year have at least three outside speakers come in and address various topics at our meetings, whether that's housing, youth empowerment, business community. Chief Ting coming back or, you know, I mean. No, one of the things I, I really thought about with the speaker series was, um, and I know we're the only crest in Massachusetts, but I don't know how difficult it would be to get somebody who's done this before to actually come talk about all of their challenges and how they navigated through those challenges. And I, and I know that we may need time money for that. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things where it, it seems that there's so much um, opposition, and and I hate to say that there there is, um, but you know, it, it'll be good to hear from somebody who has it up and running to say, yes, there were these things, and here's how we overcome them, and then we can look at what we're doing and says, okay, are you guys 
following or copying what has worked for these people? And is this, is this something that maybe that you haven't thought about that now that, you know, you could now think about and get around these impediments that you're having? Because that was, that was the big one. Because again, I, I really feel like coming from where we were with the transition team that five months into Camille's tenure, it feels as if it's day one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that's and that's very concerning. So mm -hmm. and and that's why I ask her, does she have everything that she needs? And you know, I, I don't think she can say no if she didn't. Um, but if we can as a committee offer something um that to say, hey, we get the you have challenges and we're here to support you. And one of the things that we did to support you was bring a success story and how they develop their program and how they try to work it and then the things that they had to overcome and things that they implemented. Because I, I get it with what she's saying about standard operating procedures, but I refuse to believe that there wasn't like a baseline there before. You know, it seems as if I mean, two years, there's no way two years in, you're just doing a standard operating procedure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and and that's the thing, Avril. I mean, it's it's really been almost kind of like, a, it wasn't just from the, the interim team. It was like, so there was the Earl kind of, yeah. you know, phase where it was bringing it up and he got it up to eight. Then it was the interim people. Then remember, they lost, like, I don't know how many people. It was down to like two or three. Then they hired more people during the interim time. And now they now she lost, you know, four people. And now it's back to, you know, almost like square one again. And we're back to well dispatch, you know, they were still figuring things out and so on and so forth. When during the interim um, you know, phase, um, well, during Earl phase, it seemed as if dispatch was right on the cusp and then Earl got dismissed. Then interim, it seemed like again, like, okay, we're about to do dispatch, nothing. And now, and now um, with Camille, no dispatch, period. I guess during the interim, I guess it was one or two calls or something that had gone through dispatch. So it, it, it's just like a start and stop. It's a continual start and stop with press, um, which, you know, again, for me, it's it's very disheartening and frustrating. And and a lot of times it, it makes me think, you know, you know, is this, you know, is this sabotaging the, 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 the department? Because... There was a lot of resistance when we were recommending um, Crest. There was a lot of resistance from the town people. There was a lot of people that did not want Crest to happen. So, um, so for me, I have to kind of you know put that that question out there because it, it is is this continual um, type of situation. So, I don't know. Um, and in terms of your question, so as you know, you know, there's another crest in, um, there's one in Northampton. Northampton started a, 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 a crest. Well, I don't know what they call it, but a community responder. So Northampton has one. I don't know where they're at with it right now, but obviously they kind of, they got a lot of their direction actually from Earl. They met with Earl a lot before they, they started that one. So I don't know if they're in place, if they're not, but that might be interesting to kind of talk to them. And then I know that for us, when we were doing a lot of the, the research, one of the ones that we really kind of focused on was the Cahoots one from Denver. And then there was another one from California, but I forget what's the name of it. Um, because again, you know, all of them were, were different than ours, right? Because we ended up creating something that was really kind of more um, tailored to um, our town, right? And our town needs. Um, because I, I know that with with um, some of those other um, kind of responders uh, 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 units, they were very much part of like either their mental health um, or clinic clinician kind of a program. They were or they were part of the police or, you know, so a lot of them were, were not these independent kind of um, departments. So we really wanted to kind of craft it in that way that, yeah, you work with clinicians and things like that, but it was still these kind of responder um, uh, folks that are really focused on anti-racism as one of the, you know, main things, de-escalation and, and, and so on and so forth, right? Um, in terms of kind of interacting and really ha kind of having this lived experience and all of that. But I think it would still, like you said, we'd, we'd need some money because a lot of the ones that I know about 
are in the West Coast area, you know, so if we were going to bring someone from there, we would need, you know, the money to bring someone out. It's, it's, a, it's a great idea because um, we could kind of, you know, really um, ask them lots of questions, pick their brains uh, on some of these things, even though knowing that obviously they're much different and some of them are much bigger, right, because they're big cities and stuff like that. And they dealt with like really a lot of like more even more impactful things. But it would be good to see though too, because a lot of them are a lot more years in place. And you know, there's always that fear of okay, um, responders, you know, can't get into this or that because of their safety. And they're in big cities, they have responders, you know. And from what I obviously it's been a few years, I haven't looked at it, you know, as closely. But there wasn't any kind of, you know, injuries towards the responders or anything like that that I that we knew about. I believe, and I'll have, I can double check, but I think like the research nationwide has been like less than one percent of calls have even ever been involved the police and to say like we we actually need a police response on this that initiated as a responder call. I think that's the number that I saw, but, mm -hmm. but I do, I think that that's a great idea. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the time I see it's eight. Yeah. Um, would it be helpful for us to just maybe continue this conversation next time, but come with a list now that you kind of have given us some starting points to, to say like, these are some goals we could work on and maybe it would be helpful to look at our charge again too, to, to, make sure that they're aligned and I can find that and send it around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. But let's not forget, um, you know, one of the main ones it, besides kind of thinking about our goals will be these updates by the 18th, please send to Allegra and I just your ideas for what um, both uh, Crest and DEI can, can include in their reports. And then we will fine tune um, by the 25th to get it to Camille and to Pamela and Philip, and then um, ask them to send us something by the 4th so that then we could have it to digest and then include in our packing. Do we know if the original, their original data, is that in Excel format? Do we know what format that is in or is it in Word? If, if you can find out, um, because if it's in Excel, um, I may, I may have an idea, but I, I don't want to give her more work. Yeah. yeah. From what remember, remember Pamela was always saying that for months when, when she was in the interim team, that from what I remember, because again, you know, sometimes things get switched on us in terms of what they actually tell us is that it, it was Excel, but remember they were supposed to get this new fangdangle software or whatever to be able to crunch the data, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know if they ever got it or not, but yeah, it would be Excel. Mm. So if, if if it is an Excel and if she doesn't mind sharing me, just like the last, where she got this last information from, I'll play with it and see, but I may have an idea, but I, again, I don't want to say, can you do this in Excel? And then she's going to say, that's more work. I don't want, I do not want to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you just pose it? You know, in terms yeah. of your feedback, just pose it. Let's yeah. just, let's just ask her. That's the only thing that we could do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See what she says. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um. So yeah. wait, just before we forget, October 9th, our next meeting, um, yes. 6.30. And then um, block party is September 19th. And just look out because remember I asked Pamela to send us like some time blocks. Um, Cause I know I wanna do some tabling cause I thought that was good last, last year to just kind of engage with, with the community. So I'll be there on the 19th. So um, I, I am I'm away that weekend, I'm sorry. Excuse me? I, I am away that weekend, the weekend of the oh. 19th. I'm actually leaving on Thursday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. that's too bad. Yeah. But um, but hopefully so. <clears throat> Allegra, you'll be around and yeah, I'll be here. <clears throat> Lisette, will you be around? Yes. Okay, great. So, but but we'll be sorry to to miss you, April. But we'll represent you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Oh, are we gonna do public comment? Oh yeah. But but uh, April, you don't have to stay on. Obviously, I know you have to go.
she's quiet so let me see until she calls me yeah <laughs> thank yeah. you Alegan, for reminding about the, about the public call yeah. I was like okay i'm out of here um right now we have seven attendees if you would like to make a public comment please use the raise hand function and i will bring you into the room one by one Hi, it's it's Martha Hanner. Can can you hear me? Yes. Good yeah. evening. Hi, Martha. Yes. Hi. Hi there. Yes, I just wanted to respond to a couple of things there. One, when you talk about having a, a speaker series, you know, what about having it on a different night, like the Wednesday that's halfway in between your monthly meetings, so that you didn't take time from your monthly meetings when you want to focus on, you know, Crest and DEI. You could. You could do it on a different Wednesday night. And as far as uh, equivalents of Cress and other places, if you did it on Zoom, then you wouldn't have to pay people much to get it in. You could make a whole forum on uh, how you know alternative policing has worked in, in, in two or three other places. And uh, as I recall, uh, during the interim period, Pamela was mentioning that there was going to be money uh, for a couple of people to go and see how a program was working somewhere. It was somewhere in the east, um, south of here, and I don't remember where. Um, well, you could ask her. I know Albuquerque, New Mexico has a program and uh, others, so that would be one. And then an, an, another topic that is something that has been concerning me for some time is the whole process of uh, soliciting candidates, interviewing, and adding them to our committees and boards it seems to me really lacks transparency. And, uh, you know, what's the recruitment process to try to get more diversity? And then it seems that the forms that you have to fill out are kind of daunting. And then there's the interview process, and then there's no transparency about how many people ever applied or what their diversity was or... You know, should the candidates be named or is that invading privacy uh, and so on before there's ever uh, people selected? And then the whole delay of, of months and months, too. But, uh, you know, that that whole process is something that really, I think, needs to be tackled and investigated somehow. <laughs> so that was my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'll be very quick. Um, good meeting. Um, so a couple of things. I know, you know, some folks have already left. It really pains me that after three years, uh, you, you know, we still don't have your, your center. Uh, the resident of our board is not yet ready. And we're not even talking about BIPOC cultural center. Very, very sad. Our town is like a business. It's a corporation. And it seems to me that there is the attitude of no accountability. This can never happen in any other organization except for go government, whether it's local, state, or federal. So much waste, people just don't care is what is happening. I am very pleased to hear from Emerald um, about goals for CSSJC. I like the robust discussion. I think one of the successes of CSWG and, and Deborah, you alluded to that too. I think one of the things that we did well was to put the town council on, on notice, like, we will schedule, not, you know, the group will agree for the co-chairs to work with town council leadership to come and present. While we're doing, while we're doing that, we do outreach individually, make sure that people show up. 
when CSWG is presenting. So we, um, CS, uh, S, uh, your group need to be in front of the town council, arrange with the town council president and, and the vice to put you guys on an agenda. And the agenda could be equity issue, upper funds, the goal, because we have only three more months left and there is still money left. The town manager is talking about putting the extra money from upper funds into cash reserve. And that's insulting. The money that is meant to help marginalize population in our town is not happening. So, I mean, both of you co-chairs try to reach out to Lynn and say, do you want to talk about equity in our town? Uh, Deb, you alluded also to, with all the advocates in the school system, you know, social, um, uh, the restorative justice, we still lost it. So the town council, the community need to know what the role of CSSJC is beyond making sure the recommendation made by CSWG needs to happen. Your and your committee is one of the most important committee in town in the sense that your charge is to ensure equity in our town, in business world, in our school system, in our town government, in housing, in contracting. When we talk about capital budgets in our town, this committee want to needs to make sure that people of color are benefiting from the contract jobs that our town puts out. So in looking at goals, perhaps one of your goals should be how, you know, the rest of the upper funds, will some of them be going to BBAA and, you know, other groups? Go in front of, you know, the town council, bring it up. We have only three more months left and I will stop. I know it's been a long night, but thank you all for your time. To say that I'm embarrassed and ashamed of the two departments that CSWG recommended would be an understatement. I don't get it. I'm a business owner. I run a company and it cannot take three and a half years to put programs running. It's just ridiculous. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Yeah. Not seeing any other hands. Still not seeing any other hands. So I am. Any topics we did not reasonably think about within 48 hours before this meeting started? All right, then I think we can adjourn at 8.43. I will send out a reminder of all the deadlines we talked about, and we will see each other in October. October. And 19th. hopefully on the 19th, we'll see some of you all too. Yes, September 19th, 19th block for the block party. <laughs> all right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.